Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Good morning to you and good morning, uh, small business. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for so many blessings you have bestowed us for, uh, for faith, for fellowship, for family and freedom. We ask a blessing upon this, this Congress and that we, we do the Lord's work and uh, we pray for a debt deal. How about that? We pray for negotiations to bring us in for a landing. As uh, Memorial Day approaches, we want to be mindful for everybody that's lost somebody, family and friends that's lost people that have defended that freedom. Let us always remember their sacrifice so that we may have this day. Keep Guam, Guam safe from this typhoon. We ask that that storm go somewhere else other than hit Guam. Uh, Lord, we're grateful. Thank you. And all this we ask in your name. And everybody said together, amen. amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the greatest nation on the planet. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God Okay, before we get started, I want to uh, let everybody know we're having some technical issues. I reminded my staff we put a man on the moon in 1969. On, we put a man on the moon, and here we are later. So the five-minute uh, clock that we have is not working in front of you, but we have a temporary clock up over the uh, where the other clock is. So that's what we'll follow. So remind everybody to keep your remarks under five minutes, and we'll be controlling that time from here. Okay. All right, now the committee will now come to order, and a quorum is present, uh, and without objection, the chair is authorized to declare a recess of the committee at any time. Pursuant to Committee Rule 13 and House Rule 11, all votes will be uh, rolled to the end of, this, of the meeting. I now recognize myself for opening remarks. Welcome to today's markup to discuss six bipartisan, bipartisan bills that address the various needs of Main Street America. Frankly put, our nation's small businesses, entrepreneurs, and innovators have faced some of the strongest economic headwinds in recent memory over the past two years. Here on this committee, it is our job to be the strongest advocate for small business as they are the heart of each of our communities and employers of nearly 62 million Americans. That's why our work here is so important and why we must get our economy back on track and our workforce motivated. Before us today are bills that support our veterans, entrepreneurs, make common sense oversight changes to the 7A loan program, alleviate the labor shortage crisis, and enhance workforce development in our country. All four of these topics have been discussed widely by our members, and I'm proud to, that our hearings are resulting in legislative action. Five of the six bills we are considering today passed the House last Congress with a resounding support, and I'm proud that we are starting this process today so we can get them across the finish line and hopefully signed into law. I want to thank our members for bringing these bills forward as they represent the work and devotion of our committee as a whole, and as well as the ranking member and her staff for helping us to come together with this bipartisan package of bills. Uh, with that, I yield to the ranking member Velasquez for her opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this markup to discuss six bipartisan bills that will go a long way to help our nation's 33 million small businesses and exercise our oversight of the SBA. All but one of these bills unanimously passed through our committee in previous year and on suspension with overwhelming bipartisan support. Two other bills under consideration today strengthen the oversight of 7A loan agents to help address some of our workforce challenges that are especially acute for small businesses and to provide service members and veterans the dedicated focus on entrepreneurial development and contracting assistance. Today's legislation showcases this committee <laughs> bipartisan tradition to enact legislation that foster a nurturing environment for small businesses as well as conduct rigorous oversight on SBA's programs. To that end, I'm pleased to lend my support to these bills, and I hope that this is a sign of more bipartisan work to come. Small businesses depend on it. They play a critical role in the growth of our economy by creating jobs and supporting our local communities. They are innovative and resilient, but face challenges that we must be committed to solving together. 
That is why it is important that we are able to come together today and take steps to help small businesses address some of these challenges and celebrate all the good they do for this nation, particularly our transitioning service members and veterans. I look forward to our discussion, and I yield back. Thank you, Ray. Oversight Act introduced by Mr. Mooser and Mr. Phillips. I now recognize the bill's sponsor, Mr. Mooser, for an opening statement on H.R. 1644. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as this committee has discussed extensively already in this Congress, it is imperative that the SBA has the oversight capabilities in place to manage its access to capital programs. Without accurate information, we cannot perform the oversight that is needed to safeguard and protect American taxpayer dollars. Uh, this bill, H.R. 1644, the 7A Loan Agent Oversight Act, will ensure Congress receives the data it needs to conduct proper oversight of loan agents that participate in the SBA's flagship 7A lending program. The SBA's Inspector General has reported that nearly 15 percent of all 7A loans include a loan agent. Unfortunately, the OIG has also reported that over the last decade there has been more than $335 million in documented loan agent fraud. H.R. 1644 will provide information on how many loans have been processed with the assistance of loan agents and the default rate of loans that are associated with a loan agent. Additionally, the legislation requires the SBA to perform a risk analysis on agents who operate within the program. Uh, at the end of the day, these are the government programs that were developed to assist American small businesses to obtain access to capital. Given this important mission, Congress and the SBA must conduct the appropriate level of oversight. The information that will be provided to Congress under H.R. 1644 will be paramount as we measure the effectiveness of these programs and whether the SBA has the correct oversight requirements in place to administer such a significant program. As more small businesses utilize the SBA's program, it is increasingly important for Congress to understand how different groups assist small businesses and lenders through the lending process. Mr. Chairman, I, I thank you for bringing these bills forward. I uh, appreciate my, my colleague, uh, Congressman Phillips, uh, for uh, his partnership on this. I look forward to working with all colleagues to ensure the SBA's access to capital programs like 7A are serving our small business as well, and we remain good stewards of taxpayer dollars, and I yield back. Thank you, and I would now like to recognize the co-sponsor of the bill, Mr. Phillips, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to voice my support for the measure before us, uh, legislation introduced by my good friend and colleague, Mr. Muser. As a co-sponsor of the 7A Loan Agent Oversight Act, I thank Mr. Muser for his leadership and partnership on the important issue at hand, which is oversight of loan agent participation in the 7A program. We've heard it for years from the SBA's Office of Credit Risk Management and the Office of Inspector General that we can and must do more to supervise and track 7A loans generated by third-party loan agents. Although loan agent activity can make up as much as 11 percent of the entire 7A portfolio, there do remain gaps in SBA's oversight of these individuals. As Mr. Muser noted, the legislation would require OCRM to submit a report to Congress every year detailing the performance and risk factors with regards to the 7A loans generated through the services of a loan agent. By better understanding loan agent participation in the program, we can continue to ensure the integrity of SBA's flagship program, the protection of taxpayer dollars, and most importantly, the success of small businesses across the nation. As those of us on the committee continue to work in a thoughtful and bipartisan manner to increase access to capital for small businesses, it is essential that we provide effective oversight over the SBA and give it the tools it needs to manage risk within its loan portfolios. I look forward to voting in favor of the legislation and urge the committee and my colleagues to adopt the measure and report it favorably to the House. With that, I yield back. Thank you. Other members who wish to be recognized for a statement on H.R. 1644. Seeing none, I would like to chairman. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I would like to be recognized. Uh, let me begin by thanking uh, Mr. Muser 
the chair of the Economic Growth, Tax, and Capital Access Subcommittee, and the committee's by ranking member, Mr. Phillips, for working together to make sure SBA has the proper oversight in place to address the increased risk introduced by loan agents in the 7A program. Over the years, the Office of the Inspector General has identified the increased risk associated with loans originating through agent activity as a top agency challenge and is a concern that I shared. In February 2020, we held a hearing to examine the management of the Office of Credit Risk Management, which is responsible for the oversight of SBA lenders and the 7A program. The two bills we are considering today are a direct result of our committee's oversight work on this issue and will enable SBA to monitor loan agent involvement in the 7A program and better manage the risk. In the interim, the IG reports the SBA has made great progress in addressing this loan standing challenge. I'm pleased with the SBA's progress and the bipartisan effort we are seeing today to find a common sense solution. I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1644. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Okay. Any other members who wish to be recognized? for a statement on H.R. 1644. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on, and I want to thank you for that, uh, Ranking Member, and I now recognize myself to speak in support of this legislation. H.R. 1644, the 7A Loan Agent Oversight Act, is a critical piece of legislation that would require the Small Business Administration's Office of Credit Risk Management to submit an annual report containing specific information related to 7A loan agents. Plain and simple. This bill is about providing common sense, accountability, and protections for the American taxpayer and Main Street America. I want to thank my colleague from Pennsylvania, Mr. Mooser, for introducing this bill, as well as the gentleman from Minnesota, Mr. Phillips, for co-sponsoring this important piece of legislation, and I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1644. Now, if there is no further discussion, the committee now moves to consideration of H.R. 1644. The clerk will report the bill. H.R. 1644, to amend the Small Business Without Act. objection, H.R. 1644 is considered as read and open for amendment. Does anyone wish to offer an amendment? Okay. Uh, seeing none, the question is now on adoption of H.R. 1644 and ordering it favorably. Report of the House. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. And H.R. 1644 is agreed to and ordered favorably. Mr. Chairman? House. Yes. I do request a recorded vote. All right. A recorded vote has been requested and pursuant to Committee Rule 13 and H and House Rule 11. Further proceedings on the bill are postponed. The next bill we will mark up today is H.R. 1651, the Small Business 7A Loan Agent Transparency Act, also introduced by Mr. Phillips and Mr. Mooser. I now recognize the bill's sponsor, Mr. Phillips, for an opening statement on H.R. 1651. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I'm pleased to speak in support of my bill, the Small Business 7A Loan Agent Transparency Act. Over the past few weeks, this committee has engaged in some spirited debate about the future of SBA's capital access programs. Regardless of where we all stand on SBA's proposed changes to the 7A and 504 loan programs, I know that we all understand the importance of SBA continuing to provide access to capital for small businesses. The 7A program is the SBA's flagship capital access program, providing over $25 billion in working capital to small businesses in the last year alone. The 7A program is a staple of the small business lending ecosystem, reaching those who may not otherwise be able to obtain a loan for their businesses. Notably, the program aims to, aims to carry out its critical mission at no cost to the taxpayer. Let me say that again, at no cost to the taxpayer. And that brings me to the legislation before us. As I mentioned earlier, up to 11% of the entire 7A portfolio can be generated through loan agents, who are third-party intermediaries that connect borrowers with SBA lenders and provide them with loan application services, usually for a fee. Despite their significant presence in the 7A program, Okram lacks the capability to uniquely identify and systematically monitor loan agent activity. Instead, Okram is left to rely on self-reporting lender reviews to track the participation of 7A agents who are responsible for pro processing billions in taxpayer dollars. We know this dynamic adds potential uncertainty to the 7A program, as OIG has identified increased risk introduced by loan agents as one of the agency's biggest challenges. 
Although SBA has med- made progress in its oversight efforts, there is more that can and should be done to limit exposure in the 7A portfolio and maintain its integrity and reliability for small businesses in need of capital. The Small Business 7A Loan Agent Transparency Act takes three simple steps to improve SBA's oversight of loan agent participation in the 7A program. First, it requires that OCRM create a mandatory registration system to uniquely identify loan agents who participate in the 7A program. Second, it requires OCRM to establish an accompanying database to track the services offered by 7A loan agents and their performance within the 7A portfolio. And lastly, it authorizes OCRM and the SBA Lender Oversight Commission to take enforcement action against 7A loan agents. This legislation is straightforward, it is bipartisan, and most of all, common sense. And adopting it will help us take a crucial step towards strengthening the 7A program. I want to thank the chairman and ranking member for their collaboration in drafting the legislation, and to my friend Mr. Muser for his participation on this issue. I once again urge my colleagues to vote in favor of the legislation, and I hope to see it reported favorably to the House. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and with that, I yield back. Thank you, and I would now like to recognize the co-sponsor of the bill, Mr. Muser, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and as we examine access to capital for small businesses, it is imperative that we also look at the SBA's existing 7A loan program. As we are, I do want to uh, very much thank my friend and colleague uh, from Minnesota, Mr. Phillips, uh, for working on the role of loan agents within this program. Mr. Phillips introduced H.R. 1651, the Small Business 7A Loan Agent Transparency Act, which addresses concerns presented to us by the SBA's Inspector General. Mr. Phillips' bill, H.R. 1651, takes the steps to ensure the SBA can track the role of loan agents within the SBA's largest traditional lending program. I do look forward to working in a bipartisan manner to ensure the SBA has the correct level of oversight in place for the growing population of agents within its flagship 7A loan program. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you. And are there any other members who wish to be recognized for a statement on H.R. 1651? Okay, seeing none, I'd like to recognize the ranking member to speak on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I commend Mr. Phillips and Mr. Muser for their bipartisan work on H.R. 1651, the Small Business 7A Loan Agent Transparency Act. The 7A loan program is SBA's largest traditional lending program. It provides access to capital for small businesses that cannot find it elsewhere. In fiscal year 2022, SBA approved more than 47,000 SBA loans, totally more than $25 billion. Loan agents are an integral part of the 7A program, oftentimes facilitating access to capital by connecting borrowers with SBA lenders or by offering other products. As reliance on loan agents increases, it is essential that the agency manage their involvement to minimize fraud. Competent loans agents can screen borrowers, help prepare forms, and better reach underserved communities. But dishonest agents can cast a stain on the 7-8 program, hurting borrowers and lenders alike. That is why I'm pleased to support the bill before us today, which requires SBA to establish a registration system that collects data on 7A loan agents to better track and evaluate the performance of loans generated through loan agent activity. I urge the committee to adopt this measure, and I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that, and I now recognize myself to speak in support of this legislation. H.R. 1651, the Small Business 7A Loan Agent Transparency Act, continues this committee's efforts to ensure proper safeguards are in place at the SBA to protect taxpayers and the small businesses that rely on the longevity of the program. This bill would enact new oversight of the 7A loan program by establishing a registration system for four for, for seven agents, and this change will allow for greater transparency to root out bad actors in the system. Once again, I want to thank my distinguished colleague from Minnesota, Mr. Phillips, for introducing this bill, as well as my good friend from Pennsylvania, Mr. Mooser, for co-sponsoring it. I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1651. If there's no further discussion, the committee now moves to consideration of H.R. 1651. The clerk will read the report. H.R. 1651, to amend the Small Business Without Act. Without objection, H.R. 1651 is considered as read and open for amendment. Does anyone wish to offer an amendment? 
Seeing none, the question now is uh, adoption of H.R. 1651, an ordinance favorably report of the House. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. H.R. 1651 is agreed to and ordered favorably. Mr. Chairman. To the House. Yes, sir, Mr. Mooser. I request a recorded vote. Recorded vote has been requested pursuant to Committee Rule 13 and House Rule 11. Further proceedings on the bill are postponed. The next bill we will mark up today is H.R. 1541, the Small Business Workforce Pipeline Act of 2023. This bipartisan legislation was introduced by Mr. Crow and co-sponsored by Mr. Molinero, Mr. Tanadar, and Ms. Salazar. I now recognize one of the bill's co-sponsors, Mr. Molinero, for an opening statement on H.R. 1541. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm proud to have introduced the Small Business Workforce Pipeline Act alongside my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, including uh, Mr. Tanadar and Ms. Salazar. Uh, this bipartisan legislation seeks to address an issue that affects communities all across America and certainly uh, throughout upstate New York, the part of New York State I represent. Uh, this bill will address workforce shortages for local small businesses by directing small business development centers to establish and facilitate the implementation of apprenticeship and training programs for small businesses. Uh, we know is, uh, that we need to improve workforce development for our nation's small businesses, and this bill will help address the issues that continue to hold Main Street back. Certainly, as we all travel around our districts, as I do mine, we continue to hear from small business owners on how they cannot find enough people uh, to work. Uh, we had the opportunity of one of my constituents, Mr. Bruno Schickel, to uh, present just a month ago uh, before a hearing of uh, this committee. Uh, as the owner of Schickel Construction in Ithaca, New York, he told us, as many con uh, contractors and construction companies have explained, it's becoming increasingly more difficult to rec recruit skilled employees. I look forward, Mr. Chairman, to the swift passage of this bill. I thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, and thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, for your work on this important issue in this piece of legislation. And with that, I yield back. Thank you. I would allow, like to recognize the co-sponsor of the bill, Mr. Tanadar, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I also thank uh, uh, the Representative Crow and uh, Representative Molinaro and Representative Salazar uh, for working on this great uh, bill. I'm here to support H.R. 1541. Uh, small businesses face uh, great challenges, including hiring, recruiting, and retaining qualified workers. In my district, across our nation, small businesses are struggling to find the skilled workforce they need to thrive. However, H.R. 1541 can make a significant difference in addressing this issue. H.R. 1541 is a forward-thinking bill that aims to create opportunities through apprenticeship networks. These networks will be established in collaboration with leading universities, colleges, development agencies, the private sector, and other key shareholders. By bringing together these diverse entities, we can leverage their expertise, resources, and connections to build a robust workforce development infrastructure. One of the greatest advantage of this bill is its focus on providing alternative pathways to success and a dignified career. As the cost of college education continues to rise, apprenticeship offer an attractive and viable option for individuals seeking meaningful employment. By combining on-the-job training with classroom instructions, apprenticeship equip workers with the skills and experience needed to excel in their chosen fields. Moreover, this bill has the potential to uplift underserved communities and help individuals escape poverty. By providing apprenticeship with good wages and opportunities for career growth, we can empower individuals to improve their lives and contribute to the economic prosperity of their communities. Supporting H.R. 1541 is not just an endorsement of small businesses, but a commitment to fostering economic growth, reducing unemployment, and strengthening our communities. This bill would create a workforce pipeline that connects small businesses with the talented 
individuals they need to succeed. By investing in workforce development through apprenticeship, we are investing in the future prosperity of our nation. I am proud to co-sponsor HR 1541. Thank you, and I yield back. Are there any other members who wish to be recognized for a statement on H.R. 1541? Seeing none, I'd like to recognize. Oh, Mr. Crane, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, I understand the shortage of qualified workers that we have out there right now as a former entrepreneur. I have many friends that are entrepreneurs, and this is one of the number one issues they deal with. That being said, when I talk to them about the causation and the reason they're having a tough time finding uh, qualified workers, never once have I heard any of them say that it's because the SBA doesn't have an apprenticeship program. I want to point out that uh, it is my opinion that this town, this bu bureauc the bureaucracies up here don't do anything well. Um, you know, and so it does, it does concern me, um, you know, when we're going to when we start tasking um, the SBA to do jobs like this, because there's really no accountability up here. Even if, even if, even if we do have oversight studies and what, whatnot, um, when we find out that these groups aren't doing what we task them to do, nobody ever gets fired. And so it, it is concerning to me when I, you know, I understand the intent of this. I think it's great that it's bipartisan. Um, but I just have concern that this is just going to be one more of these programs where, you know, nothing actually gets done. Small businesses don't get help. If we want to help small businesses, um, we need to really improve the economy. Um, we need to quit pumping, you know, tens of billions of dollars into the economy that we don't have, causing record inflation. Those are types of things that actually will help small businesses. I yield back. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Crane. Uh, are there any, any other members who wish to be recognized for the statement on H.R. 1541? Okay, seeing none, I would like to recognize the ranking member to speak on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I would like to correct uh, for the record that SBA is not given a responsibility uh, in creating an apprenticeship program. This is for the small bit, the network of small business development centers across the nation. And they are uh, stakeholders uh, that work in partnership with the SBA. I'm pleased to support H.R. 1541, the Small Business Workforce Pipeline Act, which was introduced by Representative Scroll, Molinari, Tanedar, and Salazar. This this bill allows SBDCs, small business development centers, to assist small firms in establishing job training and apprenticeship programs. Earn While You Learn programs are proven ways for small businesses to attract and retain qualified workers. By empowering our nation's SBDCs to share job training and apprenticeship information from federal agencies with small employers, we can address one of the most pressing problems facing many businesses today. Small firms have been hit particularly hard by tightening labor markets. As the recovery continues, unemployment drops and job openings grow, the, I constantly hear from the smaller employers in my district that it is getting harder than ever to recruit and retain qualified workers. The legislation will take an important step to help American workers gain new skills and assist small businesses in finding quality workers. I want to thank Mr. Kroll, Mr. Molinaro, Mr. Tanedar, and Ms. Salazar for their bipartisan work on this bill. I urge members to support this bill, and I yield back. Thank you for that, and I now recognize myself to speak in support of this legislation, H.R. 1541, the Small Business Workforce Pipeline Act of 2023, expands the services of small business development centers to include the information on how small businesses can establish and improve work-based learning and apprenticeship programs. Just this past month, Mr. Marlonero led an Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Workforce Development Subcommittee hearing highlighting the serious labor shortage issues facing far too many small businesses across this country. 
I want to thank Mr. Crow for introducing this bill, as well as my distinguished committee colleagues, Representatives Molinero, Tanadar, Salazar, for co-sponsoring this bill. To close, I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1541. If there's no further discussion, the committee now moves to consideration of H.R. 1541. The clerk will report the bill. H.R. 1541, to amend the Small Business Act to include Without requirements. Without objection, H.R. 1541 is considered as read and open for amendment. Does anyone wish to offer an amendment? There's no amendment at the desk, so we will briefly pause while staff distribute. No, I'm sorry. Seeing none, the question is now on adoption of H.R. 1541 and ordinance favorably reported to the House. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and H.R. 1541 is agreed to and ordered favorably to the House. Mr. Chairman, I'd uh, like to request a recorded vote. A recorded vote has been requested and pursuant to Committee Rule 13 and House Rule 11. Further proceedings on the bill are postponed. The next bill we will mark up today is H.R. 1730, Supporting Small Business and Career and Technical Education Act of 2023. I introduced this bipartisan legislation along with Ms. Uh, Glusenkamp Perez, Mr. Allen, Mr. Fitzpatrick, and Mr. Magaziner. I now recognize myself for an opening statement on H.R. 1730. H.R. 1730, the Supporting Small Business and Career and Technical Education Act of 2023, ensures federal resources are being used to support entrepreneurs and connect businesses with qualified employees. This legislation directs the small business development centers and women's business centers to assist small business in hiring graduates from career and technical education programs. Additionally, this legislation supports career and technical education graduates by directing the SBDCs and WBCs to assist them in starting a small business. There are too many young people who feel like they have no choice but to attend a four-year college and incur tens of thousands of dollars in debt even though their skills and interests don't fit the typical four-year college education. College is not for everyone, and this bill helps those people that choose an alternative educational path to get employed or start their own small business. I believe this legislation will help engage with the career and technical education community to support small business growth, and I want to thank my distinguished committee colleagues, Ms. Glusen and Camp Perez, for co-sponsoring this legislation. And to close, I urge my colleagues to support the bill, and I would now like to recognize the co-sponsor of the bill, Ms. Glusen and Camp Perez, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for including this bill in today's markup. Um, like the chairman, I came from the automotive industry. He comes from the dealership side. I come from the independent side. Uh, and before coming here, I owned an auto repair and a machine shop. Um, my district is home to a number of auto technician uh, and technology training programs, including the programs at Lower Columbia College and Clark College. These are family wage jobs that you don't need a four-year degree uh, to get into. You see a guy driving down the road with a big truck, nice truck. Uh, he's got a snowmobile, doesn't have roommates. That's a guy that's working in the trades. Um, one of the best parts of my job is getting to go to these programs and visiting and encouraging these young people in the path that they've chosen. And the reality is we are desperate for technicians. By 2024, we're going to be about 600,000 technicians short in America. So there's a desperate need. Um, the problem is that after graduating, it can be hard for these students to find the right fit. Um, it's true that if you are a real, if you're a big player, uh, you've got a lot of employees, you can probably staff a job fair and go down there and, and recruit. But if you're a mom pop shop struggling with all of the bureaucracy and all of the job, you know, all the things that it takes to run a small business, you can't just take a day off to do uh, recruitment. And what's really important about this bill is that it uh, encourages the small business development centers and the women's uh, business centers to provide resources to help the smaller guys, the growing guys, to get in there and find the right fit, find the right employees. Um, and one of the things I love about this bill is that it also works to direct um, these centers to help CTE graduates start their own business. So many of these people are brilliant entrepreneurs. They are hungry to grow our economy and um, succeed in their dreams of owning their own shop. But the financial hurdles it takes to open a small business are almost impossible to clear. Uh, my husband spent, you know, 10 years laying in the street, jacking up cars, fixing them up, building up his own business, his own clientele. Um, a lot of people give up in that time. Um, this bill it helps ensure that the resources come to small businesses, to the trades, 
and uh, start their own businesses and be successful in that. So, we, you know, for all the talk that we do about, you know, the American dream, I think it's really encouraging that this committee is putting the resources and the elbow grease behind actually supporting career and technical programs succeed and, and find the right fit in their hiring and start their own businesses. So thank you sincerely, Mr. Chairman, for your leadership in this, and um, I yield back. Thank you. And are there any other members who wish to be recognized for a statement on H.R. 1730? All right. Seeing none, I would like to recognize the ranking member to speak on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Williams. I really commend you, uh, Ms. Glusenkamp, in your efforts uh, to allow SBA resource partners to connect small employers with graduates of career and technical education programs and also give graduates the tools to launch their own enterprises. While a college education is a sure and fast way to secure a successful career in today's global economy, it may not be the most prudent path for every high school graduate. CTE programs offer viable alternatives by training students with a wide variety of skills, oftentimes tailoring the curriculum to the workforce needs of the local community. I want to thank Ms. Mr. Williams and Ms. Glusenkamp Perez for their meaningful work on this bill, and I urge members to support this bipartisan piece of legislation, and I yield back my time. Thank you for that, and I once again reiterate my support for this legislation. If there is no further discussion, the committee now moves uh, to consideration of H.R. 1730. The clerk will report the bill. H.R. 1730, to amend the Small Business Act to that objection, H.R. 1730 is considered as read and open for amendment. Does anyone wish to offer an amendment? Seeing none, the question is now on adoption of H.R. 1730 and order it favorably report of the House. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and H.R. 1730 is agreed to and ordered favorably to the House. Mr. Chairman, I uh, request a recorded vote. A roll call vote is ordered. Pursuant to Committee Rule 13 and House Rule 11, further proceedings on the bill are postponed. Before we consider H.R. 1606, I'd like to ask unanimous consent to waive the sponsor of the bill, Mr. Schneider, on the committee for the purpose of speaking on their legislation. No. Yes. <laughs> Without objection, so ordered. Now we mark up H.R. 1606, the Veteran Entrepreneurship Training Act of 2023. This bipartisan bill was introduced by Mr. Schneider and co-sponsored by myself, Mr. McGarvey, and Mr. Elsey. I now recognize myself for an opening statement. H.R. 1606, the Veteran Entrepreneurship Training Act of 2023, would authorize the Boots to Business program, which helps transitioning service members start and grow their own businesses. After dedicating their lives to protecting the freedom of all Americans, it is critical we give our veterans the tools and resources to be successful when transitioning to civilian life. Veterans are natural leaders and have the dedication necessary to thrive in the private sector with the right training. I was fortunate enough to see firsthand uh, the work uh, this program does when I visited Fort Hood with Administrator Guzman this past March. I'm proud to have had the opportunity to work with my colleagues on this bipartisan legislation to improve the Boots to Business program, and I want to thank my distinguished committee colleagues, Representatives McGarvey and Elsey, for co-sponsoring this legislation. And to close, I urge my colleagues to support H.R. 1606. I would now like to recognize the Democratic sponsor of the bill, Mr. McGarvey, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your leadership, uh, for your support of H.R. 1606, and for including it in today's markup. I am proud to join you and Rep. Elzey as the sponsor of this bill, which is led by our colleague, Representative Brad Snyder. In addition to this committee, I serve on the Veterans Committee, and we talk all the time about the importance of having strong systems to ensure a smooth transition from service to civilian life. SBA's successful Boots to Business program plays a crucial role in that warm handoff, supporting our brave men and women as they return home. Members of our military and their spouses have the entrepreneurial spirit and skills necessary to become successful business owners, and this program provides critical help in unlocking their potential. I look forward to its success for years to come with this authorization. I encourage all my colleagues to support this bill and yield back. 
I would uh, now like to recognize the other lead Republican, Mr. Elsey, for an opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I wanted to say thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Schneider, and Mr. McGarvey for leading on this bill. The Bipartisan Boots to Business program is an important step toward helping military veterans start and grow businesses. Helping the veteran will obviously help the entire family of a veteran. Going from active duty to veteran status is difficult because the service member is leaving the support system of their military family. But the Boots to Business program will help show a path forward toward success. As I've said many times, the military does a great job training our service members to do their military job. They're trained to be the most lethal force on the planet and how to best defend and protect the people of the United States. But the military doesn't do a good job at all of training them to be civilians. The Boots to Business program will help to fill that gap. Helping the veteran be successful in civilian life is critical for their, well their well-being and the well-being of their entire family and the communities where they live. I look forward to this bill passing the House, the Senate, and being signed into law by the President. I yield back. I would now like to recognize the Democratic sponsor of the bill, Mr. Schneider, for an opening statement. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and let me again thank you for allowing me to join you today. Uh, having served three terms on this committee, it is always a joy to be back uh, in this room and, and with this group. Uh, I also want to thank the committee for its considera consideration today of this legislation, the Ventur Veteran Entrepreneurship Training Act of 2023, uh, which I am very proud to introduce with uh, uh, Chairman Williams, uh, Mr. McGarvey, Mr. Elsey, um, and uh, look forward to, as was just noted, seeing it pass the House, the Senate, and be signed by, by the President. Um, as was noted, our, our military are, are the best and the brightest we have to offer. They reflect um, who we are as a nation. They serve in places far away, laying their lives on the line to protect us and, and protect our, our freedoms. Uh, success in their endeavors depends to a great extent on their natural leadership abilities, their innovation, their entrepreneurship, taking uncertain circumstances and finding ways to get things done. This is the exact same success that we are looking for in today's business leaders and why this program is so important. The skills our veterans learn and develop in the military have true application to what we are looking for in, in the private sector. And the Boots to Business program helps translate those skills, helps our veterans translate those skills as they begin civil, civilian life. Our bill builds on proven outcomes by codifying the already successful program. In fact, more than 100,000 veterans and their spouses have already benefited from this program since 2013. According to the Department of Labor, in April, the April Jobs Report, report the unemployment rate among veterans is a mere 2.2 percent compared to 3.4 for the rest of the U.S. population. Historic lows. This is in no small part due to the transition programs like Boots to Business that are helping our veterans move into their lives. Through the Boots to Business program, service members and their spouses enroll in a multi-week in-depth course. This course teaches participants everything from the process of market research to the art of securing funding for a new business. By codifying the Boots to Business program into law, we can ensure future service members are able to take advantage of the program so many have already benefited from. I appreciate Chairman Williams co-leading this bill and working with me to get it through the finish line. Over the years, I've heard from many service people turned small business owners who have directly benefited from training provided by the Boots to Business program. With so many communities seeking to replace the businesses that didn't survive the pandemic, this program is even more important. I am pleased that this bill has also enjoyed bipartisan support and urge all my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to show their support by voting in favor of it today. Once again, I want to thank the committee staff who helped draft this le legislation and my colleague, uh, Roger Williams. I look forward to seeing this legislation go one step closer to being finally signed into law. And with that, I yield back. Thank you. And are there any other members who wish to be recognized for a statement on the bill? Seeing none, I would like to recognize the ranking member to speak on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In light of the upcoming Memorial Day holiday, it is an honor to support the Veteran Entrepreneurship Training Act that greatly benefits our nation's veterans. Representative Snyder has been a longtime champion 
of this bill, which codifies the SBA Boots to Business program to help transitioning service members launch and grow their own small businesses. And I applaud Chairman Williams for his leadership as well as the other two co-sponsors, Representative McGarvey and LZ. As members of this committee know, starting a business is not for the faint of heart. It takes courage, perseverance, resourcefulness, and leadership to launch a successful enterprise. Many of these qualities are inherent on, in those that serve our country. Despite these skills and expertise, many service members have difficulty transitioning to civilian life. A recent survey conducted by the Syracuse University Institute for Veterans and Military Families found 44% expressed difficulty with transitioning from military life and 53% said they did not know what they wanted to do as civilians. Entrepreneurship is one path service members can pursue to make the transition a success. In fiscal year 2022, Nearly 24,000 veterans, transitioning service members, and military spouses received Boots to Business Entrepreneurship Program. The program has been a shining example of how the SBA and its resource partners can make sure the American dream is accessible to the valiant men and women of our military, as well as veterans and military spouses. That is why I urge all the members today to support this bill. Thank you. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for that. And I'll once again, again, uh, voice my support for this bill. If there's no further discussion, the committee now moves to consideration of H.R. 1606. The clerk will report the bill. H.R. 1606, to amend the Small Business Act. Without objection, H.R. 1606 is considered as read and open for amendment. Does anyone wish to offer an amendment? All right, seeing none, the question is now an adoption of H.R. 1606 and order it favorably reported to the House. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and H.R. 1606 is agreed Mr. to be Chairman, ordered. request a quarter vote. All right. And a roll vote is ordered, and so pursuant to Committee Rule 13 and House 11, further proceedings on the bill are postponed. The final bill we will mark up today is H.R. 3511, Service Disabled Veteran Opportunities and Small Business Act, introduced by Mr. LaLotta and Mr. McGarvey. I now recognize sponsor of uh, legislation, Mr. LaLotta, for an opening statement. Uh, thank you, Chairman Williams, for recognizing this important piece of legislation to help the veteran community, specifically service disabled veterans. Those who have served our nation in uniform, putting our great country before themselves, deserve our utmost thanks, support, and respect. We owe an even greater debt, gr greater debt of gratitude to our service disabled veterans. As service disabled veterans transition to civilian life and look to enter the government contracting space, this committee should identify and implement ways to make that transition easier. Proudly, Mr. Chairman, this bill does just that. The Service Disabled Veteran Opportunities and Small Business Act provides greater opportunities to our nation's disabled veterans by allowing for additional contracts to be awarded to them through the Small Business Administration and Office of Veterans Business Development. Currently, agencies must, get a, must set a goal to procure at least 3% of their contracting dollars with service disabled veteran owned small businesses. Unfortunately, many agencies are failing to meet this statutory, statutory requirement. In fact, the entire federal government failed to meet this 3% goal to subcontract to service disabled veterans. This legislation helps to solve that problem by requiring the Small Business Administration and the Office of the Veterans Business Development to provide training to federal agency officials who fall below that 3% goal on how to increase the number of contracts awarded to service disabled veterans who own or control a small business. Together, the SBA and the Office of Veterans Business Development will issue guidance on the best practices on how to increase the number of contracts to our nation's heroes. I urge my colleagues to support the Service Disabled Veteran Opportunities and Small Business Act, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. LaLota. And I would now like to recognize the other sponsor of the bill, Mr. McGarvey, for an opening statement. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Again, appreciate you helping bring this bill forward. Thank you to Representative Loda. Thank you, Representative Loda, for your service, for your leadership on this, for always working to help our veterans. This weekend, we're going to observe Memorial Day. And remember those who gave, as President Lincoln said, the last full measure of devotion for our country. We'll take Monday to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice. But this Congress should work every single day to serve those who served us, especially those who return home with the wounds of their service, both visible and invisible. So I'm proud to join Rep. Lilota as a sponsor of the Service Disabled Veterans Opportunities and Small Business Act, and I'm grateful it was included in today's markup. This bill would require the SBA to issue guidance for agencies to better meet contracting goals for service disabled veteran owned small businesses and provide training for each agency that fails to achieve the goals. The bill also requires a report to Congress detailing the agencies that do not meet their goals so this committee can better understand what works and what does not and continue to improve business opportunities for service disabled business owners. I urge my colleagues to support the bill. Look forward to its passage today. I yield back. Uh, are there any other members who wish to be recognized for a statement on H.R. 3511? All right, seeing none, I would like to recognize the ranking member to speak on the bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm pleased to lend my support to the Service Disabled Veteran Opportunities and Small Business Act, which is being led by Mr. Lalora, Chairman of the Subcommittee on Contracting and Infrastructure, and Mr. McGarry. Member, uh, ranking member of the Innovation, Entrepreneurship, and Workforce Development Subcommittee. In an effort to increase the number of contracts to service disabled veteran-owned small businesses, the bill requires SBA to issue guidance for each agency to better meet the current SDBOSB goal and provide training for agencies that come up short. Building our small business base within the federal procurement space is a vital component of providing the government with the best products and services while also investing in the economic growth of America. Holding agencies accountable for meeting government set-aside goals and adequately training and funding our contracting personnel can deliver tangible results to the small contractors fighting for limited opportunities. Thank you to both Mr. LaLora and Mr. McGarvey for your commitment to our nation's veterans and your bipartisan work to find a practical approach to increase the awards to service disabled veteran owned small business owners. I urge a yes vote and yield, and yield back. Thank you. I now recognize myself to speak in support of this legislation. H.R. 3511, the Service Disabled Veteran Opportunities and Small Business Act would amend the Small Business Act to require training to increase the number of contracts awarded to small businesses that are owned and operated by service disabled veterans. Our veterans have fought bravely and served our country with honor, and they deserve our support as they transition from military to civilian life, especially as they are looking to break into the government contracting space. I want to thank my distinguished colleagues for introducing this bill and urge all my colleagues to support. If there's no further discussion, the committee now moves to consideration of H.R. 3511. The clerk will read and report the bill. H.R. 3511, to amend the Small Business Act require... Without objection, H.R. 3511 is considered as read and open for amendment. Does anyone wish to have or, have, uh, or offer uh, an amendment? Seeing none, the question is now uh, on adoption of H.R. 3511, order it favorably report to the House. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. H.R. 3511 is agreed to and ordered favorably to the House. Mr. Chairman, I request yeah. a recorded vote, please. All right. A recorded vote has been requested, so a roll call vote is ordered. Pursuant to Committee Rule 13 and House Rule 11, further proceedings on the bill are postponed. The committee stands in recess. Subject to the call of the chair, we will resume at later today, 2.30 p.m., to vote on the outstanding business. All right. Good job.
So if our Jews God can help them, but they're not out there, how do you see how do you see it in that dimension of the other? Is there any question? Yes. Yeah.
Right, we're ready to go. Okay. The committee will now resume consideration of the bills on which roll call votes were requested and postponed. There are six po postponed recorded votes, and we will start with H.R. 1644, the Loan Agent Oversight Act. The question now is on adopting H.R. 1644 and ordering it favorably reported to the House. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Luke DeMeyer. Yes. Mr. Luke DeMeyer votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Muser. Mr. Muser votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Aye. Ms. Van Dyne votes aye. Ms. Salazar. Mr. Mann. Mr. Elsie. Aye. Mr. Elsie votes aye. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Alford. Mr. Crane. Mr. Crane votes aye. Mr. Bean. Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hunt votes aye. Mr. Lalota. Mr. Lalota votes aye. Mr. Golden. Mr. Mfume. Mr. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Landsman. Yes. Mr. Landsman votes aye. Mr. McGarvey. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez. Aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez votes aye. Ms. Skolton. Mr. Tanadar. Aye. Mr. Tanadar votes aye. Ms. Chu. Aye. Ms. Chu votes aye. Ms. Davids. Mr. Pappas. Mr. Pappas votes aye. Ranking member Velasquez. Aye. The ranking member Velasquez votes aye. Mr. Chairman. Aye. Mr. Chairman Williams votes aye. Okay. Are there any other members who have not voted or wish to change their vote? I'd like to vote. Yes, sir. Okay, for what purpose uh, does the gentleman seek recognition? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, vote aye. Mr. Alford votes aye. For what purpose uh, does the uh, uh, lady... Uh, from Florida. From Florida? Yeah. I vote yes. There you go. Ms. Salazar votes aye. Okay, Ms. David. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to vote aye. Ms. David votes aye. Mr. Phillips. Uh, Phillips votes aye. Mr. Phillips votes aye. Mr. McGarvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to vote aye. Mr. McGarvey votes aye. Yes. Ms. Skolton. I would like to vote aye. Ms. Skolton votes aye. Mr. Golden. Mr. Golden votes aye. Are there any other members who have not voted on or wish to change their vote? Okay, the clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, 22 ayes and zero nays. 1644 is adopted and will be reported favorably to the House.
The question now is on adopting H.R. 1651, the 7A Loan Agent Transparency Act, and ordinate favorably report of the House. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Luke DeMeyer. Aye. Mr. Luke DeMeyer votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Muser. Mr. Muser votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Ms. Van Dyne votes aye. Ms. Salazar. Aye. Ms. Salazar votes aye. Mr. Mann. Mr. Elzy. Elzy aye. Mr. Elzy votes aye. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Alford. Aye. Mr. Alford votes aye. Mr. Crane. Aye. Mr. Crane votes aye. Mr. Bean. Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hunt votes aye. Mr. Lalota. Mr. Lalota votes aye. Mr. Golden. Mr. Golden votes aye. Mr. Mfume. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Landsman. Mr. Landsman votes aye. Mr. McGarvey. Mr. McGarvey votes aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez. Aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez votes aye. Ms. Skolton. Mr. Tanadar. Aye. Mr. Tanadar votes aye. Ms. Chu. Aye. Ms. Chu votes aye. Ms. Davids. Mr. Pappas. Ranking Member Velasquez. Ranking Member Velasquez votes aye. Mr. Chairman Williams. Aye. Mr. Chairman Williams votes aye. Are there any other members who have not voted or wish to change their vote? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Phillips, Phillips yeah, I vote uh, aye. Mr. Phillips, Mr. Phillips votes aye. Any others? Okay. Clerk will report. Mr. Molinar, how do you vote? Yes, sir. Aye. Okay, aye. Ms. Shulkin? Yes. Mr. Molinaro votes yes, and Ms. Skolton votes yes. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, 21 ayes and zero nays. The question now is in adopting H.R. 1541, the Small Business Workforce Pipeline Act of 2023, and ordinate favorably report of the House. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Luke DeMeyer. Mr. Luke DeMeyer votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Muser. Mr. Muser votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Ms. Van Dyne votes aye. Ms. Salazar. Ms. Salazar votes aye. Mr. Mann. Mr. Elzy. Elzy aye. Mr. Elzy votes aye. Mr. Molinaro. Aye. Mr. Molinaro votes aye. Mr. Alford. Aye. Mr. Alford votes aye. Mr. Crane. Mr. Crane votes nay. Mr. Bean. Mr. Hunt. Mr. Hunt votes aye. Mr. Lalota. Mr. Lalota votes aye. Mr. Golden. Mr. Golden votes aye. Mr. Mfume. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Landsman. Mr. Landsman votes aye. Mr. McGarvey. Mr. McGarvey votes aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez. Aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez votes aye. Ms. Skolton. 
Mr. Tanadar. Aye. Mr. Tanadar votes aye. Miss Chu. Aye. Miss Chu votes aye. Miss Davids. Miss Davids votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Ranking member Velasquez. Aye. Er, sorry. The ranking member Velasquez votes aye. Mr. Phillips votes aye. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. The chairman votes aye. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, 21 ayes and one nay. The question now is in adopting H.R. 1730, the Supporting Small Business and Career and Technical Education Act of 2023, and ordering it favorably report to the House. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Luke DeMeyer. Mr. Luke DeMeyer votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Muser. Aye. Mr. Muser votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Aye. Ms. Van Dyne votes aye. Ms. Salazar. Aye. Ms. Salazar votes aye. Mr. Mann. Mr. Elzey. Elzey aye. Mr. Elzey votes aye. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Alford. Aye. Mr. Alford votes aye. Mr. Crane. Aye. Mr. Crane votes aye. Mr. Bean. Mr. Hunt. Aye. Mr. Hunt votes aye. Mr. Lulota. Mr. Lulota votes aye. Mr. Golden. Mr. Golden votes aye. Mr. M. Fume. Fume votes aye. Mr. M. Fume votes aye. Mr. Phillips. Mr. Landsman. Aye. Mr. Landsman votes aye. Mr. McGarvey. Aye. Mr. McGarvey votes aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez. Aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez votes aye. Ms. Skolton. Aye. Ms. Skolton votes aye. Mr. Tanadar. Aye. Mr. Tanadar votes aye. Ms. Chu. Aye. Ms. Chu votes aye. Ms. Davids. Ms. Davids votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Ranking Member Velasquez. Ranking Member Velasquez votes aye. Mr. Chairman Williams. Mr. Chairman Williams votes aye. Okay, are there any other members who have not voted or wish to change their vote? Vote Mr. Molinar. Mr. Molinaro votes aye. All right, Mr. Phillips. And Mr. Phillips votes aye. Mr. Phillips votes aye. Anyone else? Okay, the clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, 22 ayes and zero nays. The question now is on adopting H.R. 1606, the Veterans Entrepreneurship Training Act of 2023, and ordering it favorably reported to the House. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. 
Mr. Luke DeMeyer. Mr. Luke DeMeyer votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Mr. Muser. Mr. Muser votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Ms. Van Dyne votes aye. Ms. Salazar. Ms. Salazar votes aye. Mr. Mann. Mr. Elzy. Elzy aye. Mr. Elzy votes aye. Mr. Molinaro. Mr. Alford. Aye. Mr. Alford votes aye. Mr. Crane. Aye. Mr. Crane votes aye. Mr. Bean. Mr. Hunt. Aye. Mr. Hunt votes aye. Mr. Lolota. Mr. Lolota votes aye. Mr. Golden. Mr. Golden votes aye. Mr. Mfume. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Phillips. Phillips votes aye. Mr. Phillips votes aye. Mr. Landsman. Mr. Landsman votes aye. Mr. McGarvey. Mr. McGarvey votes aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez. Ms. Glusenkamp Perez votes aye. Ms. Skolton. Mr. Tanadar. Mr. Tanadar votes aye. Ms. Chu. Ms. Chu votes aye. Ms. Davids. Mr. Pappas. Ranking Member Velasquez. Ranking Member Velasquez votes aye. Ms. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Chairman Williams. Aye. Mr. Chairman Williams votes aye. Are there any other members who have not voted or wish to change their vote? Okay. Uh, none being, the clerk will report. Ms. Shelton, you vote? Okay. Miss Yes. <laughs> yes. Ms. Skolton yes. votes <laughs> aye. Aye. I'm present. Mr. Molinaro? Miss David? Aye. <laughs> Clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, 23 ayes and zero nays. Okay, great. The motion is agreed to, and H.R. 1606 is adopted and will be reported favorably to the House. The question now is adopting H.R. 3511, the Service Disabled Veteran Opportunities and Small Business Act, and ordering it favorably reported to the House. The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Luke DeMeyer. Mr. Luke DeMeyer votes aye. Mr. Stauber. Aye. Mr. Stauber votes aye. Mr. Muser. Aye. Mr. Muser votes aye. Ms. Van Dyne. Ms. Van Dyne votes aye. Ms. Salazar. Aye. Ms. Salazar votes aye. Mr. Mann. Mr. Elzy. Elzy aye. Mr. Elzy votes aye. Mr. Molinaro. Aye. Mr. Molinaro votes aye. Mr. Alford. Aye. Mr. Alford votes aye. Mr. Crane. Mr. Crane votes aye. Mr. B Mr. Bean. Mr. Hunt. 
Mr. Hunt votes aye. Mr. Lalota. Mr. Lalota votes aye. Mr. Golden. Mr. Golden votes aye. Mr. Mfume. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Mfume votes aye. Mr. Phillips. Aye. Mr. Phillips votes aye. Mr. Landsman. Mr. Landsman votes aye. Mr. McGarvey. Mr. McGarvey votes aye. Ms. Glusenkamp Prez. Ms. Glusenkamp Prez votes aye. Ms. Skolton. Aye. Ms. Skolton votes aye. Mr. Tanadar. Aye. Mr. Tanadar votes aye. Ms. Chu. Aye. Ms. Chu votes aye. Ms. Davids. Aye. Ms. Davids votes aye. Mr. Pappas. Ranking Member Velasquez. Ranking Member Velasquez votes aye. Mr. Chairman Williams. Aye. Mr. Chairman Williams votes aye. Are there any other members who have not voted or wish to change their vote? Okay. Uh, if none, the clerk will report. Mr. Chairman, on that vote, 23 ayes and zero nays. Okay, thank you. The motion is agreed to, and H.R. 3511 is adopted and will be reported favorably to the House. Without objection, committee staff is authorized to make technical and conforming changes, and members have two business days to file additional supplemental dissenting and minority views. I want to thank all of you for being here. This was a good day today. We got some business done for America. And if there's no further business, this concludes today's markup. Without objection, the committee stands adjourned.